So we've just had the Khan and Greco fight. <sighs> what a performance by Amir Khan. Uh, there wasn't it wasn't much of a fight, um, but what a performance. Um, he came out razor sharp and absolutely dismantled Le Greco. He destroyed him. He, he, he didn't give the man a chance. You know, I, I've seen a performance like that before again with Khan uh, with Dim against Dimitri Salita. And I've seen him dismantle guys because he can do that because he's got he's so fast. He's got such fast hands. We know that if he catches you cold, because when you when a boxer goes in the ring, they're cold. And when a guy's that fast like Khan, he can catch you off guard. And when he catches you, a lot of people say Khan's not got power. But Khan's got enough power to hurt somebody. All right, he might not have enough power to hurt someone like Canelo. Or, but you've got to realise this guy's put down people like Madonna. This guy's put Zab, knocked Zab Judah out. So this guy's got a decent power, especially at welterweight and around that weight category. He's got power to really stun you. Um, it was a great, great performance. He just came out, hit him with a right hand, stunned Le Greco, saw, it, saw him stunned. And he just jumped on him and absolutely dismantled him. It was a fantastic performance. I don't know... Um, you know, there's not much, there's no nothing you can take from the fight in terms of his fitness. I couldn't take much. I wanted to actually see how he does in terms of fitness because against Canelo in the sixth round he started getting tired. But again, there was not just a lot of physical pressure on him on that night. There was a lot of mental pressure because Canelo was stalking him down and Khan knew he couldn't get hit with a big shot. So Canelo had Canelo was like stalking him. And that puts a lot of pressure on you because you know that the guy's always on top of you. He's taking your shots and you have to avoid his shots. So that's a lot of mental pressure. And obviously Canelo was hitting him as well with shots, with body shots, which obviously in the end tired him and took his toll. And then Canelo landed that right hand. But I didn't expect that today. I didn't expect Khan to look so good. Um, having said that, I thought he was, although it was a great performance, impressive, he can't fight the way he did tonight against someone like Errol Spence or even a Kell Brook or even a Crawford because he looked quite open. I don't know whether that was because that was because it was Greco and he knew he wasn't that good or or you know I just don't know. Maybe he just he, he just wanted to finish him off early. I don't know what it was, but against a good fighter because when we saw him fight against Canelo, he was very conservative, and that's how he needs to be against the top guys because. Khan's never been a puncher. He can, he's got enough power where he can catch you by surprise, but he's not a massive puncher where he's gonna, you know, he's gonna knock you cold. You know, he almost knocked Greco out cold today. You know, um, but yeah, he's got to be careful when he fights the more intelligent, better fighters. He's got to be more cute. He's got to be more intelligent. He's got to use his boxing ability. Um, obviously, today he didn't need to. Because Greco, like I said, he dismantled Greco. Um, but the, the impressive thing was, we all expected Khan to win tonight. But no one, let's be honest, no one expected him to win the way he did tonight. And I thought Kelbrook was saying, oh yeah, it was Greco. But here's the thing. We knew Khan was probably going to beat this guy, but we didn't think he would win that way. You know, when a guy goes in there after two years out, after suffering a devastating knockout and performs like that, dismantled him he didn't even give him a chance he absolutely dismantled him you know you have to you have to say a great performance because everybody was hyping about Kell Brook's performance and to be honest it was exactly the same thing right it wasn't it, it, he wasn't fighting a top level guy and he went in there and dismantled him he was fighting Rabchenko no one even knew who that was just like we didn't know who Greco was so at the end of the day I don't think Kell Brook can say oh we didn't see his fitness we didn't see his rounds we didn't see your rounds against against Rabchenko we didn't see when you did we didn't see you get hit on that eye how's that eye going to react when you get hit on it we haven't seen that so you, there's question marks still with both guys but obviously that's a fight that the British fans want to see and I think the I think promoter Eddie Hearn got Kell Brook in the ring intentionally because he wanted to hype the fight and Khan just he shot him out really Khan said the fight only happens at welterweight, you know, and I think that's good because Khan's being clever. Khan's making it, I wouldn't say it being difficult because I think Khan doesn't want to fight. He wants to fight at 147. He's stated that I want to win a world title at 147 pounds. I think, and after today's performance, I think he's looking at, he, that was an impressive performance. One thing I wanted to see about Khan tonight was, is his speed still there? Is he going to have that razor sharp speed? Because if that wasn't there, then I thought, you know what? He might have to pack it up. But I saw that tonight. He still had that speed. 
and he looked like he had power because he 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 hurt Villa Greco. You got to remember, Greco's no bomb. Like Greco went ten rounds with Sean Porter. Greco went three rounds with uh, Errol Spence, but that was on three days notice. And Errol Spence is a top top fighter. We're not talking about uh, you know we're talking about the best welterweight in the world. And Greco on three days notice went three rounds with him. Three days notice. So Khan had he had a full camp for Khan. A full camp. And Khan's just destroyed him. He didn't give him a chance. He absolutely dismantled him. It was an it was a it was a great performance. It was an impressive performance. You know, I wasn't expecting that. I'm pretty sure a lot of people weren't expecting that. They weren't expecting um Khan to perform the way he did and hats off to him, you know, because he's come back, you know, he's taken a lot of stick, there's a lot happening in his personal life, as you know, with his wife, you know, a lot of things that he's been through, boxing, and he's been through a lot, you know, so it's great to see him back and, and put a great performance on like that. But now moving forward, what does Khan do? Does Khan look to win a world title at World away? Or does he go and look for, to fight Kell Brook, which a lot of the British fight fans want to see? Here's what I would like to happen. I, I would I would love to see the Khan Brook fight, but I would also love to see Khan fight Crawford. I would also love to see Khan fight Spence. I would also love to see Khan fight Thurman. And the fight that I really want to see Khan in is a Crawford fight. I want to see him fight Crawford or Pacquiao next. If because you gotta realize Crawford's fighting Horn. And I think those fights can be made in the UK. I'm not sure Garcia or Thurman would come to the UK. I think Crawford, even Spence actually, I think would come to the UK. But again, Errol Spence is a monster. I don't know whether Khan can beat Errol Spence. Like even after today, like today didn't really give away anything. What today showed me that Khan's got the razor sharp speed so he can cause anyone trouble. But also when I look at his performance today, he was really open. Um, and against a guy that's going to be able to take his shots and come back with shots of his own, who's fast, like Errol Spence, who's got good punching power, it could be dangerous for someone like Khan. So, at the end of the day, although it was an impressive performance, there was obviously weaknesses that I saw. Obviously, you can't really judge in a 40 second when you some, someone goes in there and absolutely dismantles him. But Khan can do that to anybody. And he could potentially do it to a top class fighter as well. Don't get me wrong. It's not just the fact that he's fighting Le Greco. You know, he could potentially do that to a world class. He put Madonna down in the in the in the first round, didn't he, with a body shot? And Madonna's a world class fighter. His durability, we saw Madonna's durability over the years were incredible. So Khan can do that to top fighters as well. Don't get me wrong. And people look at Khan and they look at the fight against Canelo. Canelo was way bigger than Khan. You know, that's why Khan got knocked out, because Khan will get hit in a fight. Khan's, like, if you look at Khan's style, he's open, his defence is open. Khan's never been defensively great against Canelo. That's why he, he struggled against Canelo, because, and he got knocked out against Canelo, because he was doing something that was not against his instinct, which was to box smart, with, you know, like a Mayweather type. Like, he would never, not like Mayweather, but he was trying to, Fast combination, move out, you know, do that. But that's not Khan's style. Khan likes to trade. Khan likes to get in a tear up, you know. And against people like fighters in a ring around his weight category, he can get in a tear up. All right, yeah, he might get knocked down, but he'll get back up and he'll start fighting again. Khan's been down many times in his career. He's got up and won the fight. It's not like he's been flattened all the time. Against you got to realise, apart from Canelo, take the Canelo fight away. Khan or at Prescott was early on in his career. Against the top level guys in and around his weight, because Prescott's not a top level guy, but I'm talking about the top level guys in and around his weight. Who's flattened Khan apart from Canelo? But forget Canelo, Canelo's a middleweight. Let's look at the guys in and around his weight. Who's flattened him? No one. Garcia knocked him down and he got back up and he, and he finished that fight on his feet. The referee stopped that fight. You know, Khan wasn't out, you know. And even against Lamont Peterson, that was an epic fight. He had a war with Lamont Peterson. And he couldn't, and you know, Lamont Peterson didn't dent him or put a massive hurting on him. He never wobbled him or anything. Khan put Lamont Peterson down in that fight. But Lamont didn't um, do anything to Khan. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, I think people, I think people underestimate Khan's chin as well. I think people look at him and think we're going to hit him with a shot. 
But you got to realise there's going to be a lot coming back your way as well. There's going to be a lot of speed, a lot of, of explosiveness coming back your way. Khan's fast. He's very fast. And it's not like it's not like fast that you would have seen before. You can't get anybody in the ring or sparring with you that would prepare you for Khan's speed. You know, Phil Greco probably fought just like every other fighter. Oh yeah, he's fast, but how fast is he? Like Danny Garcia said. But when you get Danny Garcia said, when you get in the ring with him, then you realise, whoa, this guy's fast. You know, like, because you, you, you're preparing your mind that you're, this guy's fast. But when you get in the ring with him, you're like, whoa, this is even faster than what I thought that it would be. And that's what Khan does, you know. People have always underestimated him. They don't understand the kind of boxing ability he's got. The speed, obviously, we, we have to talk about it all the time. It's just electric. But Khan is a good fighter. And on his day, he can beat any of the top welterweights. Any of them. Even Spence. If he, he obviously against Spence, he'll have to box a smart fight. But don't listen. Don't write Khan off. People have wrote Khan, Khan off before when he when he lost to Prescott. No one thought he would become a unified light welterweight champion. He did. So don't write him off again because Khan is a good fighter. And I think there's a lot more to come from him because I think he's hungry. From today's performance, we saw that. I think he's really hungry. He wants it. He wants to become a star in boxing again, not just being a celebrity. He wants to become top of the pack again. I think he said he was inspired by Anthony Joshua. He feels like he can run the roost and he can because he's a massive name. You know, here's why a lot of people are jealous of Amir Khan, especially on, so especially, you know, boxers like Kel Brook and people like that. It's because Amir Khan, if you look at his following on social media, the man's got on Twitter, two and a half million followers. That's more than Joshua, who we would say is the biggest star in the UK right now, right? Amir Khan's got more followers than Joshua on Twitter. Amir Khan's got more likes on Facebook. He's got a bigger fan page on Facebook. He's got four and a half million. Joshua's got two and a half, you know? So I think on, on Instagram, he's got 1.2 million. You know, that's more. I think Joshua's got more on that. I think Joshua's got three, four million or five, something like that. He's got a lot more on Instagram. But on Facebook and Twitter, Khan's got more followers than Joshua. So that I'm just trying to tell you, I mean, that doesn't mean anything, but I'm just trying to tell you how big a draw this guy is and how popular he is and how many people in England and around the world. Because you've got to realise, Amir Khan's not, not just an, a UK star. He's known around the world. He's a big star in America. He's massive in, in Asia. People know who he is. He's globally recognised. Joshua's just known in the UK. Even in America, Joshua, not many people know who he is. Amir Khan's more famous than Joshua in, in America, you know, so th that's the thing, this is what I'm trying, trying to say, that this guy has still got a lot of, he's got a lot of um, drawing power, because he's such a big name, people know who he is, you know, that, just because you're a big name, you have popularity, doesn't mean that you're going to get, you're going to get, you know, bombs on seats and you're going to fill out stadiums like Joshua is because Joshua's got the audience captivated now and everybody loves to see him fight. But Khan has the social media following. He has a following. And if he if he gets back into it and starts showing the public that, well, this guy's serious, he's back and he's he looks he looks great. There's a great chance the public will start getting behind Khan again, you know, because they'll start to think, well, this guy's a good... He's back to his best. And I think Khan's got that ability. He just needs to get back to it, work hard in, in, the, in the gym, prepare and fight people like Spence Crawford. That's, these are his next steps. But yeah, talking about the Brook fight, I think the Brook, I think the Brook fight, I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen because I think Amir Khan wants him to fight at 147. And here's the thing. This is what kind of pees me off a little bit. Everybody, like, everybody has a go at Amir Khan. Oh, he's moving the goalposts, right? You, Kelbrook used to fight at welterweight, right? And now you're saying you can't make welterweight. I'm pretty sure Khan would look to make, if he, if he, if, if there's no, no other option out there, I think he'd make the Brook fight at 150. But here's the thing. You've been fighting at welterweight all your, all your life, right? Now you're saying you can't make welterweight. And Khan's saying... Fight me at welterweight because I'm not a world. And Kel Brook's talking rubbish. Oh, Khan struggles to make. He fought at middleweight in his last fight. He struggles to make. He, how does he struggle to make welterweight? He went up to 155 pounds to fight Canelo because it was an opportunity. Just like you went up to fight Gennady Golovkin at 160. That doesn't mean that you're a middleweight. But that doesn't mean you struggle to make welterweight. 
Amir Khan made 150 for today's fight, not because he wanted to, because Le Greco couldn't make the weight. So he wanted Greco to be at his best. Khan didn't make the weight 150 because he couldn't make 147. It was because of Le Greco. So Khan doesn't struggle at welterweight. And it, Khan, listen, if I was Khan, I'd say, listen, I don't really need you. I could fight Crawford, I could fight Spence, all the big fights are welterweight. Kell Brook hasn't got anything at 154. He, he's got a lot of great fighters that won't pay him that much, that are difficult fights that he'll probably lose. I don't think he beats Charlo, I don't think he beats Hurd. So really, he needs the Khan fight because that's a winnable fight for him and it's a lot of money. So the risk reward for him is great, but now the risk reward for him fighting Charlo is not going to be... Charlo's... He's not a huge name in America. Where does that fight happen? Because Charlo, no one knows Charlo in the UK. So is that fight a massive fight? It's a tough fight for Kell Brook. Tough fight. And that's why Kell Brook's running off. Because Amir Khan doesn't need Kell Brook. Eddie N says they both need... I disagree. Khan doesn't need Kell Brook. Khan can fight Crawford. Khan can fight Pacquiao. Khan can fight Spence. Everybody knows who Spence is now. Because he's fought Brook. So that could be a massive fight in the UK. Khan can fight Thurman. You know, he's got so many options. Pacquiao, he's got so many options. You know, Kell Brook hasn't got options because all the guy, top fighters in around his weight, 154, are all tough, tough fights that are probably not going to pay him that much. And Kell Brook, that's why Kell Brook wants to fight Khan because it's a lot of money. In terms of the fight, I can't really judge both of their... I can't really judge who would win it. I will obviously favour Khan. I've always favoured Khan. I always thought he'd beat Kell Brook. But... I don't know, on today's performance, on Kell Brook's last performance, I don't know because I don't know what Amir Khan's fitness is going to be like when he goes into the late rounds and I don't know what Kell Brook's eye is going to be like when he gets hit on it consistently because Khan's going to hit him there. So we haven't seen enough from either fighter, so it's both still up in the air because it, they, Khan's, I would say Khan's performance was more impressive. Brook did what he had to do, but Khan's performance was unbelievable. Like Because when Khan does that to somebody... He's obviously going to look so impressive because his hand speed is so lightning. It's just so fluent. Everything's so fluid. You know, Kell Brook's more like he, he looks to get weight, weight his time and then hits you with one shot. You know, well, Khan's just like bang, 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 bang. It's just like a machine gun all over you, you know. And Kell Brook's more like a sharp shooter. So Kell Brook could cause a problem. But I think... Paulie Malinadi said that, you know, Phil LaGreco's not a top guy and you would expect Khan... To beat him, but even Paulie Malinaji probably wasn't expecting because Phil LaGreco was quite close with Paulie. He wasn't expecting Khan to do that to Phil LaGreco. And you have to say that Khan could cause any welterweight a th threat. He's a threat to any welterweight, and he could beat any welterweight. But I think the next, I think personally, I would like to see him fight Crawford or Pacquiao next because Crawford's a guy moving up. 247 rather than going in with people like Spence and Thurman straight away and if he does well against Crawford beats him or that's a tough fight and you know the other thing is Crawford's pound for pound ranked probably the best fighter in the world right now so that's another thing and I think I think Amir Khan's hand speed I think his boxing ability will be a lot of trouble for Crawford and I think he's bigger than Crawford so I think that's a great fight I, th I think Amir Khan should target that fight I think it's a winnable fight for him I think I think after that performance, the main thing I wanted to see is Khan's speed. If Khan's speed is there, he's got a chance. Obviously, there's question marks around his chin. If he gets hit, what's going to happen? But I, like I said, I think his chin's underrated. I don't think his chin is as bad as what people think it is. And if people go in the ring with him, looking, oh, we're just going to walk him down, look to him, they could end up getting caught themselves, just like Madonna did. You know, he hit Madonna with a great body shot and that could happen to Spence, that could happen to anybody because at the end of the day, if, if, you, if you get caught with something and it just catches you off guard and it buzzes you, if you get hurt against Amir Khan, the fight's over because he's got some, he's going to hit you with three, four, five fast combinations. You ain't going to see him coming. They're too fast. So that's the thing about Khan. You can't underestimate this guy. I know people are probably going to say, comment on this video and say Khan hasn't got a chin, but I think none of you can deny that that performance was impressive tonight but yeah guys leave your thoughts in the comment section below what 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 do you what did you make of khan's performance how impressed were you i was really impressed two years out he came with a bang he knocked this guy out in 40 seconds who who's a decent fighter not a world level fighter but a decent fighter and for him to dismantle him like that was a great performance
But who do you guys, the, the, the million dollar question is, who do you guys want to see Khan fight next? Brooke, Crawford, Pacquiao, Thurman, Spence? Leave your comments in the comment section below. And guys, remember to please like, share and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.